Hey GED students, so I got sent this exact same problem from the GED math crash course twice this week, so I thought I better just handle it. But just to let you know, this is one of the practice problems from the lesson on solving two-step equations, but this is from the advanced level practice. And advanced level practice is always a mix of um, the hardest things you might see on the GED along with college prep. And this particular problem is more of a college prep than a GED prep problem. That being said, because it keeps getting sent to me and students are like halfway there with it, I'm going to work it because it is still great practice and uses the same concepts we've been looking at. So the two students that I was looking at did different first steps, but they were both good. So the first student who sent me this problem, I really like what they did. Uh, they decided that um, they're in their goal to get X alone here. The first thing that they needed to get rid of was this fraction, this three on the bottom. And I totally agree with you. As we learned in the lesson, um, we're working the order of operations backwards when we solve, when we work to isolate the variable, we're actually going to work the order of operations backwards because we're moving backwards. And so that means we leave groupings till last. So this group that's naturally made by the top of a fraction can just stay still while we get rid of the bottom of the fraction. And so I absolutely love what the first student chose to do. She said, I'm just gonna take this entire fraction and I'm going to do the opposite of dividing by three. I'll multiply by three. So she took some parentheses. She stuck a three there, but she didn't stop there. She said, I don't just want to get rid of the three. I also want to get rid of the negative. And so she chose to multiply by negative three. Now, remember, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So she came over here and multiplied by negative three as well. But where she went wrong was on the next step. Uh, she noticed that the three and the three canceled, but she forgot to account for the fact that the negatives here would also cancel. This negative on this three would cancel with making this entire fraction negative. That's what that negative out front means. The entire expression is negative. And so those things would have canceled, leaving us just with 5x minus 4. And then, of course, see, if this and this and this and this cancel, we're just left with that grouping. And then, of course, on the other side, negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. Negative times a negative is a positive. And now this is a lot simpler of a problem to solve now that we got rid of both that negation and that divide by 3. So that being said, um, of course, we're working that order of operations backwards. We freed up our grouping. This is not a grouping anymore since it's been freed from that fraction. So we can get rid of any addition subtraction before we deal with multiplication division. So I will get rid of that subtract four by doing the opposite, add four. And of course, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Subtracting four and adding four are inverses. They cancel, leaving me with just five X on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, 21 plus 4 is, of course, 25. And now only one more number to get rid of. That's that 5. Since it's multiplying, I'll do the opposite. I'll divide. Again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Multiplying and dividing by 5 are inverses. They're opposites. They cancel. X is alone. And there's the math to do. 25 divided by 5 gives me X is equal to 5. Now, that was the way that my first student went about it, and I loved it. It was very slick to get rid of the negative and the three at the same time. But, you know, we didn't have to do it that way. Now, my second student used a calculator app on the internet to see the steps, but the problem was it skipped a step, and so he couldn't figure out where the numbers were coming from. So let's take a look at it that way. So what the app did that they started with was it just dealt with one thing at a time. At first, it got rid of the three, then it dealt with the negative, but it didn't show how they dealt with the negative. So let's look at it ourselves. So 
this particular app said, I will just get rid of the divide three by multiplying three. And I say, that's totally legit. We can do that. Again, we can do whatever we want to an equation as long as we do it to both sides. Uh, but now if I only deal with the three, let's take a look at what we'll be left with. This is what they didn't show you. Multiplying and dividing by three absolutely cancel, but careful. Your instinct was just to slide that negative up to the five X minus four. Four. That's wrong. And there's a reason for that. See how that negative was out front? I'm telling you that you're negating this entire expression, not just one piece of it. So this negative should be on this entire 5x minus 4. Now, Mathematically, that's why it's so important to understand that the top of a fraction is a grouping. You freed that grouping up from the divide by 3, but you haven't freed the grouping up from the negation. The negative was for the whole group. And so this step they should have shown you was that this is still a group, that if you use the negative on this side instead of getting rid of it, I'm gonna say that again, if you use the negative on this side, instead of getting rid of it like the last student did, you're going to need to use the negative on that entire group, the top of a fraction, is a group. And so I'm going to need to use parentheses to communicate to myself that I'm negating the whole group. If we want to show ourselves this step. Now, of course, your app didn't show you that step. It just skipped right past it without explaining it. Now, of course, on the other side, negative 7 times positive 3 is negative 21. And now we are doing an act of simplification, not solving at this point. We're going to simplify this expression by, instead of taking away the negative, the calculator used the negative. They did the operation. They negated. Remember, negating is like an act of multiplication. It's like multiplying by negative 1. So 5x times negative 1, or just negated, is negative 5x. But negative 4 times negative 1, or negating negative 4, as we call it, makes it positive 4. And that's how they got that sign change that so mystified you. And now you can see, it looks like I have a different expression than before. Four. Will I get the same answer? Let's take a look. Okay. Now, again, my group has been freed. I dealt with both the three that was dividing my group and the negative that was negating my group. So now I can follow that order of operations backwards. There's no more groups to worry about. I'll do the opposite of adding four this time, and I will subtract four from both sides. Again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So adding 4 and subtracting 4 are opposite. I'm left with negative 5x. And now if I have negative 21 minus 4, and you can do this in your GED calculator if you struggle with negatives, you'd have it. Negative 21 minus negative 4 is negative 25. Okay. Now, I want to get x alone. I need to get rid of that negative 5. Now, careful, a lot of students would add 5 here, but that negative or that 5 is not subtracting with x. They're shoved together. They're multiplying. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying. I'm going to divide, and I'm going to divide by exactly what I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of a negative 5, not a positive 5. Of course, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'll divide the right-hand side by negative 5 as well. Multiplying and dividing by negative 5 are opposites. They cancel. My left-hand side is just an x now. And then negative 25 divided by negative 5 is, again, positive 5. So two legit ways to deal with this and a very great demonstration of how there's not always one right way to go in algebra, but as long as you use your logic here and you know how to read your problems, you're safe. So the key here is really understanding that with that negative out front, it's negating the entire fraction, not just the 5x. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I will do my best to answer it.